Hey guys! Welcome to the One Up Weekly Live. Yeah. All right, guys, what's going on? We're going to get right to it. We're going to be talking right about to analog tonight. They got a lot of amazing products, and we want to run through them real quick. And we also want to talk about the history of analog. They've been around for a little while. Some people Justin, may know you about it. You didn't even ask me how I'm doing. You just you went so far into this. You didn't even ask I how don't I am. Care. And how everyone right, else okay, is. Okay, fine. <laughs> hey, Ralph, how's it going? <laughs> I'm going well, Justin. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. So we're going to jump is right into it. Everyone else doing okay? I don't care okay, how they you feel. All you right, know, like, okay, whatever. Okay. Like, wow, you guys right. give this a one if you're doing <laughs> awesome. I only am rushing like this. Only reason is because there's a lot of content to cover and we got to get into it. So let's just let's just jump right, right into it. So 2014 analog comes out and drops the ball and says, hey, we're going to come out with something called the analog NT. Now, this thing was fantastic. A lot of people might think the analog mini was their first product, but analog NT was actually this guy. We're going to we're going to walk through it real quick. Hold on. Hold on. So they came out with a couple different models here. And mainly the different models were, um, you know, like the variety of um, of colors, you know. But this is like their Famicom version. Um, you know, this did take both con uh, both uh, consoles. You could do the Famicom cart, or you can have the NES cart, and it and it and you're probably thinking it reproduced it perfectly. Well, it's not that it reproduced it necessarily. Like here it is with the Famicom disk system. It's the fact that it actually had the Nintendo chip in it. So the original analog NT had, you had to actually, they had to take components, like salvage components from the original console. That's how well it was recreated. It was like actually using parts from the original Nintendo. But this is 2014 stuff. It was $500. It was super expensive, but it was still amazing. I never owned this one, but I did own the Analog NT. Um, here's another picture. This We're still talking about the Analog so NT, Justin, but I, I own the Mini. Yes. That didn't seem... That's, that's obviously not very scalable, what they were doing, but... That's right. Why it was, yeah, it was 100% the original chip, so how did they even do that? Like, do you know the backstory there? Did they just, like go find salvaged Nintendos and do that? Like, what, that's crazy. Yeah, that, I actually that, didn't know that. Yeah, that's the whole idea, right? It wasn't scalable, but it was supposed to be just like a, a niche type of product, you know? There, there wasn't, you know, but that that got them going, right? And, and so this is uh, Kevin Ketris or Kevin Horton. He was working on this design. But if we take a step crazy. further, that's when uh, they started coming out with even, even a better product, better idea, something that is scalable. And this is probably the, a more familiar picture that people... I've seen the analog products, you know, you've seen GIFs that they have with just like swapping out the different cartridges. Now, this one in particular did use an FPGA, but Kevtris is a huge expert when it comes to FPGA. He's built several uh, products released on it. So this one, um, you know, the reason why it's so great is because an FPGA, it was recreating the hardware, right? So the actual chips that were inside the Nintendo, most prominently the PPU and the CPU of the original Nintendo this one did not cannibalize uh, the original Nintendo. It just completely recreated in hardware. Still super expensive, $500. $500 to recreate your Nintendo. Now, I owned one of these, and it was fantastic. I ended up selling it because it was so expensive, but we'll get to that later. Then, Ralph, we all know about this, right? What's this yeah. one called? The Super NT? Super NT, Yeah. So the Super NT, this is where they changed the game, and we're going to show off some uh, the Super NT. As you can see, we have we have one here, and we have some Mega SGs, and we're going to go through those and show Justin, you. Justin, I was more of a Sega guy. You tell me this whole episode, all we're going to talk about is is Nintendo. The whole episode. Yeah, this is a Nintendo episode. No, no, no. I thought it was supposed to be both. <laughs> I thought we we're going to talk about. I thought that was my we're time. I get to talk and talk about Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, about Sega. No, we'll talk about Sega. We'll talk did about you, Sega. Did okay. You, did you just take that part out of the presentation? Like, are we not talking about Sega? I was kidding. It was kidding. Okay. Okay. All right, so okay. go ahead. Sorry. So we got the Sorry Super NT, right? Now this one's using an FPGA. It's recreating. It takes the original carts. It recreates the Super Nintendo. It's fantastic. Has HDMI out. Can scale all the way to 1080p. You can adjust it. There's a lot of different configurations and settings you can do to get just you know to get that exact version of Super Nintendo that you want. When it comes to how big the do you want to stretch it? Do you not want to stretch it? Do you want scan lines? Has all of that. What makes this thing awesome? $199, around 200 bucks. Now, now it's funny. They they kind of 
pitch it like I think it was like 189 but then the shipping can be like $20 or $70 depending on where you live in the world so they kind of get you on the shipping so when you're when you're when you're thinking about analog with that sticker price that you see 189 you got to add a little bit more for shipping just know that ahead of time there's going to be some shipping cost but then they came out with Ralph your favorite console oh, of all time, Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah, the Super NT. I mean, the sorry, the Mega SG. You have me brainwashed. The Mega <laughs> SG. So the I Mega SG, this, this was a very popular unit because it recreated those, the, the Sega Mega Drive, the Genesis, and, yeah. um, and the, you know, and it's you a, connect it to an actual physical Sega CD, which we will show you tonight. It's super that's cool. Right. So what's cool about it is they've fully recreated the hardware, you know, in an FPGA. It takes all the original carts. When these things came out, the compatibility was super high, and then you know once you get it out to the masses, then everyone's testing like every corner case game, and then they said, "Hey, this game has a little bit of issues. This game has a little bit of issues." You go to Analog's website, you can see the different firmwares that they released, and it was basically to patch that. Most of the YouTubers that were covering it in reviews were just like, "Okay, this thing's awesome. Like it's flawless, right? Like it's I put, just." I, I put so many cards. I mean, not that I was. The funny thing is, I I literally got it like way late, and I made mm -hmm. a joke. I, do you remember the video I was joking around about about they gave my unit to Metal Jesus? I don't know if you remember that <laughs> intro I did, yeah. but I joked around about how they were writing me saying, "Sorry, you got this so late." And by the way, every YouTuber already reviewed it, so have fun. But uh, but I gave it. I I gave a good twenty five carts that I had laying around in it, and even and it was a mix of just you know, repros and originals and multi-carts and EverDrives, and it just handled everything. I'm sure there were carts that were edge cases, but I never had any mm -hmm. problems with it, even with the original firmware. That's right. So now we're going to talk about something that's coming out next, and that's the Analog Pocket. So this is the reason why we're so excited about the Analog Pocket. If you go through the history, they've been around for a while. They've proven themselves. They got that price point down, going from 500 to $200 they perfected the emulation in such a way where, you know, it's very desirable to play. When you play this on full screen, large screen TV, it looks really, really good. So imagine they can take all of that, put it down to the size of like a Game Boy Pocket, you know, like the, a smaller Game Boy. But they took it a step further. It's not just running uh, this one. It's not out yet. The pre-orders start tomorrow on Monday. The and August Justin, 3rd. dude, is this going to be another one of those things? Because you know, when Analog does anything pre-order, it sells out super fast. I mean, super fast. Do you, do you anticipate this is going to be one of those? I think like, so. I think the market, the market for Game Boy is really huge, and that's something that a lot of the uh, different hardware developers have learned uh, over the years. You know, like Game Boy, Game Game Boy Advance. Like they thought maybe it wasn't popular, but when they cover Game Boy and the different modifications you do for the Game Boy, it's very, very popular. And so, not only that, but they're making it where, so this is the Nintendo Pocket, it has all of these features in it, like, you can connect it to a device and, and play chiptune music on it. So, not only, this, now they're creating something new, right? They're creating a platform where people can use this, and then, because they've emulated all the different synth devices for, for the Game Boy and the Sega, uh, Sega Game Gear, you can tap right into that. You know, and then Which, say, by the you know, way, how many when you told me about this, I had no interest in it until you kind of started thinking it when you started um, kind of telling me, hey, this is how we could use it for the show. Like you gave me <laughs> right. all these like, really cool ideas of like Justin being able to like, create the music on the fly for the show. And I'm like, that's actually right. really cool. So I didn't think about that. Yeah, they took it even further where it's it actually has two FPA, two FPGAs in it. So one that's closed and one that's open. So the closed one they have reserved for their firmware it, you know, and being able to put original carts in it. This will take Game Gear, uh, you know, Game Boy games, and I think it Neo Geo Pocket, and then I think there's another one, like, I can't remember off the top of my head, Turbo Graphics Pocket or something like that, I can't remember. But it, can, it has these different modules where you can take it, but not only that, it has a second P FPGA in it, and that one allows developers to develop their own game, and the software that they're using is the type of software where you don't necessarily have to learn how to code necessarily. And so I'm really excited about it. My daughter, she loves playing what's what's called Sketch, where you can design your own video games, but it's all drag and drop for logic. You can do if statement, broadcast statements, all this stuff, all with drag and drop. She learned it all on her own. This is something that I think that she'll be able to do, and you can play it. You can, like, design retro games. Like, it's a platform to, hey, for retro Justin, gaming. I, so think, that's... I think this might come up a lot, so I think maybe just squash this one right away. So he said it's like the Retron. So, like, let's just squash that mm, right away. Because if someone how do we, I think we need to use an analogy. So, yes, the Retron... Um, has a place in the market. Um, when analog starts to have prices in the sub 200 
it blows away the Retron. The Retron does all its emulation. It's got, maybe it's running Android. It's got a Linux stack. You know, it's running emulation all in software. So it's depending, some of it is open source. Some of it is open source without the rights to use commercially. Um, some of those products are doing that. I believe, is that right? Is Retron one of the ones that's violating some of the open source agreements? I can't recall off the top of my head, but it could be. Well, um, and it's this, not. There is no FPGAs in the Retron, as far as I'm, as far as I know. It's not FPGA, correct? It's all software. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, so it, it's, it, not, it's not. It's not. So it's not all software. Hardware, it's yeah. running a layer of software, an operating system, right? And then it's running like, like an emulator, which is another piece of software that's meant for that ARM-based processor. And yeah. then it's you know got the ROM. And it's just dumping the cartridge. Dumps the, rot, the ROMs, yeah. It dumps the ROM, right? Where this, it actually has all of the support for hardware. The input outputs actually read real time directly from the cartridge, right? So and it has no operating system layer. It's not running Android. It's not running Linux, right? It's just recreating the actual chips that are on the Nintendo. And then so when you plug a card into it, it's actually doing everything that the Nintendo would have done and nothing more. Right, it's not doing anything extra. It's not also keeping a system clock. It's not also running the operating system and Linux and checking for updates and connecting to time updates. Nothing like that. It's not doing any of that because none of that exists on the analog products. And that's what difference. That's the difference yep. between something like a Retron or Raspberry Pi, for example. It has to do all that stuff while also trying to do the video game. This thing is only doing the video game. I wish I, I almost wish I had a PCB near me because if you imagine like looking at a, like looking at a PCB with all the chips on it and the logic mm -hmm. that makes that up, it's basically like taking that and saying this single hardware chip is able to, in, in, in that hardware chip, reproduce all of this exactly like it was physical, but it's not, it's in this virtual space. So it, 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 for all intents and purposes, as long as it's coded correctly, yeah, and that's it, another key. It, it thinks it's exactly the original hardware. It's not software doing it. It's in hardware, but it's amazing because if done right, and definitely analog has done it right, you it, it's indistinguishable from the original if it's done right. But then the other thing that's crazy is it's actually better. So then then they, then they add enhancements <laughs> on it to make it right. better than the original. And we'll go that's into right. we're gonna we're gonna live connect those consoles here today, so you guys can see like some of the menu mm -hmm. options and things like that. But I'll let Justin keep going here's, here. Here's an and example, we'll get right? That soon. Look at this one. So it's a, it's, let's say it's a Game Boy. It's emulating a Game Boy. And so if you're the circuits inside an original Game Boy, you're looking around, and you're like, yeah, I'm totally living in this Nintendo world. You know, I, I see Nintendo's logo. You know, I'm inside this Matrix world that is the Game Boy. The code, the hardware itself for the Nintendo Pocket, or I'm sorry, the, the Analog Pocket, is reproducing that same hardware. And if there was some imaginary person inside that hardware he would think he's living inside a Game Boy, except for when he goes over to that corner and sees that it connects to a dock that digitally never goes from analog, you know, never goes into analog. It outputs HDMI that can go to your television. And from there, scales that tiny little screen all the way up to a large television. Now, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's going to look horrible. And I'm telling you that it doesn't, because there's another project called the GBA Consolizer. GBA Consolizer was written by this guy named Woozle. It's this hardware developer that took the original Game Boy Advance. Is that his real name or was that a nickname? No, it's his nickname. Everyone, you know, Woozle no, is, is, like, is his code name, right? So right, I'm just I'm just saying. So I'm he's what, Mr. what he Mr. Woozle, what he did was he's <laughs> he's he's connected into where the L C D is supposed to be connected to, but instead it's connected to an FPGA. And in this case, I believe it's an FPGA that's just acting as a scaler and then managing the controller inputs. That's that's what um that's what the GBA consoleizer is doing. This is a picture of the inside of one of the parts. So that little piece spiders out and connects to all these solder points. And then those solder points are pulling in like the input controls and making it so you can plug in a Super Nintendo. Now, this is not analog. This is this is a guy named Woozle who came up with a hardware package. Mr. Woozle. Works with, a, <laughs> works with Jason over at Game Tech to, to sell these. And these sell out right away. These are like you, really, really hard to find. They, they had to do lotteries. They had to do lotteries for, for like who's gonna get one because the demand was so high that they knew they weren't gonna be able to make enough. So to make it fair and so his site wouldn't go down, they were like, "Sign up at ease for this. Put your email address in, and we will draw." And the reason why I know this is because I, I I built the lottery thing for Jason as a side project. He reached out to me and said, "Hey, can you build me a lottery?" I'm like, "Sure." 
So we did this thing where, you know, all the email addresses went in and then it would randomly pick the top 100 or randomly pick 100 people that would get a GBA uh, consoleizer. And so that's that's uh, uh, another view of it where you can stick it inside this uh, 3D printed model um, that puts the Super Nintendo port in the front. And so when this thing scales up to an entire television, if you can kind of see this, this is a picture uh, someone posted on one of the forums of the GBA consoleizer scaling all the way up to fit on a television. So think about it. A Game Boy Advance, little tiny, tiny little screen, right, is all of a sudden super big. Does that not look good? Doesn't that kind of look like Super Nintendo quality? It looks amazing. It looks yeah. really, really good, actually. I mean, it, you would you would almost think it'd be impossible to take something with that screen resolution and put it on like a 70-inch TV or a 60-inch TV and make it look good, but it looks amazing. That's right. That's what the that's what the analog pocket is going to be like because that's what's cool about analog is they take they're going to take it and make it you know ac- ac- accessible to more people because they're manufacturing these things <laughs> in masses and they always do the thing where they yeah they don't make enough you know it seems to be always just a little bit less than the market wants you know so the demand is always there except. They, you, you could get one if you wanted to pre-order one tomorrow. Like, I think, I think everyone that's watching here, if they, you know, get it the right time, they could be able to reserve their copy of the Analog Pocket, again, which is going to be able to recreate with original cartridges, the Game Boy, the Game Gear. And that's, that's right there. 200 bucks, that's worth it right there. Like, to be For able sure. to be able to play, like, Game Gear games that look this good, like the picture, hopefully it's coming through YouTube really well on a full screen. Super excited about it. Yeah, it looks awesome. So someone, so Patrick Casey had a really cool way to uh, explain FPGA versus emulation. He said emulation equals speaking foreign language by translating your native language. And then he said FPGA equals thinking in the foreign language. I actually <laughs> thought that was kind of cool <laughs> the way you said that. That's pretty neat. That's actually really, really good. I know. And we have got a couple super chats. I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge mm-hmm. those. But we got a couple. We got Remy. He said, um, don't forget the NT Mini V2. I, he pre-ordered his. And That's then right. we had got a super chat earlier from Stringer Films. He said, all right, chumps, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stringer. And then uh, Jeff Rainwater, a regular on the show, and he said, uh, thanks for the goodies, Ralph. Uh, he got the stuff that he won. And then actually, he got an extra thing, Justin, because I sent one that said it wasn't going to show up. Mm-hmm. So he got two. He won. He got two. So, uh, so awesome. Amazon hooked him up there. That wasn't, wasn't necessarily, I can't take credit for that. It was Amazon screw up. So he got something, he got an extra thing. It's kind of cool. Very cool. So going back to that analog NT V2. So originally I purchased the analog NT when that first came out. I was it was finally accessible and in my price range and I really wanted to get it. It cost $500 and and I played it and it was just just absolutely awesome. But then I met Ralph and he started telling me to buy cameras and things like that. So I needed some <laughs> extra money. So I put it on eBay. And I was just like, you know what? I'll set it at $500, you know, as the as the cuz they were going for a little bit more than $500 cuz they were rare, right? So I just put it as an auction, minimum, I think maybe even I did $400 or whatever. It sold for like two grand. Like, oh, so crap, think about you, that. I don't remember people, you telling me a cold sold for that much. Did you yeah, tell people, me that when I was like not listening or something? Because I would have been probably, like, what? Oh. Probably. Cool. Like, and, and, and now I regret it. Like, it was <laughs> nice to have that extra money and then I used that to buy some other, you know, retro projects. But now, but now I missed it. So when the analog NT V2 came out, I think it's called the Noir, the N-O-I-R. Boom. I'm get, I got it. I got it pre-ordered. And there's there's these rumors on the internet that, like, that's it. They did a second run of the Analog NT V2. It's 500 bucks. It's done. The pre-order's over, and we'll get it sometime next year. But there's also a lot of rumors out there that a new console is going to come out, like, next year called the Analog 8. And it's because they've done some trademarks on it. A lot of this information I learned from Mad Little Pixel. You go check him out. He has so videos just on really it. Really quick, really quick. I just want to. So, is it because the Analog NT sold for so much because there were limited runs of them? Like there weren't yes. that many you could get, right? So it's like a pretty rare to fought, to get these days. Like, do you have That's any right. clue how many they made? No clue. I'm sorry, I don't know. But it was a small amount. I mean, whatever it was, it wasn't huge, right? I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, it's not a hundred thousand. Could... Yeah, it's probably like in the tens of thousands. I'm guessing. Oh, wow. Okay. And so. Hmm. Do you they're think gone. Else That's could it. Get that much for that right now? Like, I don't I know, you'd have to right check now. eBay. Yeah, just 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 check eBay. That would be the way to go. You know, and then there's a lot of other pe- people that have done it. I've seen it, and they just 
you know, they don't demand buy it now, you know, like, oh, I want $3,000 for this console, you know. If you if you put it out there for, you know, starting bid $300 and it goes for only $300, then that's that's your deal. But if it goes for more, and some of that's some of, that's some of the things on eBay, like um, some people just get into bidding wars, you know. But during that time, there were a lot of consoles going for about $2,000. But going back to the Analog 8, supposedly they're going to re-release a Nintendo, an original Nintendo, that'll look a little bit more like this, except for a Nintendo. Now, this thing, this is that Super NT for only 200 bucks. There's rumors that they're going to come out with a, a Nintendo, a, an Analog 8, that will be a Nintendo, and instead of it having, like, the metal case, it'll be more of this plastic case, and it'll only be, like, 200 bucks. So, for those of you that really want to get in... <laughs> I read the Analog 9, that's kind of funny. For those of you that really want to get the original Nintendo, there's hope. Um, can you <laughs> there's put that hope, back up, Can you put that back up really quick? Okay. Can we just put no? We put our little buddy <laughs> next to it. Why is he not showing up? I don't know. Did you put the Wait. wrong buddy in there? He's showing. Why is he showing up on what? He's gone. Why is yeah. that what we see when we put the me Mega SG up? That's not. I don't fair. know. I don't what know. Is man. That nonsense. See, there's. It's. It's like as if there's a little like um, you know, piece of code running in this software that's heck? not allowing. What did you do that? You did that. I right? did not do that's this. Totally I did not you do this. Being a jerk. Yeah, you I'm did. not you being a jerk. I don't know. Why don't you like remove the camera and put it back in? He's so mad right now because. This is my Super NT right here. This is Justin's hands coming out. And then what for the whatever heck, reason, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. I figured it out. Check it out. Everybody look. What is no, it? not that. Is it back? That's, there we go. Is it there? Yeah, but put it next to your little buddy. See? <laughs> be buddy. Now, clearly, who's who's a little bit let more messy here? It's clearly me. There's wires and well, nonsense and crap everywhere. I don't, I don't everywhere. like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it. No, come on. Let me. I hate no, this. Right. Like, why isn't mine below? Mine's like over there, you know, and yours. <laughs> anyway, so what we're, what we're looking at, guys, we got the Super NT, the Super Mario Brother, the Super, Super Mario World. And then what do you got there, man? So I have the Mega SG, but it's mm -hmm. hooked up to. So, so the thing that's crazy is, right, like the Mega SG is small. It's just this little guy, yeah. right? But it looks crazy because guy. I have it hooked up to the Sega CD right yeah. now. Yeah, so it like has as an example, to, right? Yeah, so the cool thing is, is if you guys remember that little interface, yeah, see how see how the difference between the uh, original and the um, you know, this is this original is hardware, the, and this is the smaller version of the Nintendo, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you take a look, the Mega SG is really tiny, but the cool thing is, if you guys remember the little side interface on the side where you could put it into on onto your Sega CD, they give right. you this little pad here. Because the problem mm -hmm. is, is it, it, the, the, the height doesn't really line up. So they've figured That's out right. a way to, like, you put the pad up, it elevates it, and you can plug it right into your Sega CD. So if you have a Sega CD collection, how cool is it that they actually thought enough to say, how can we design this to support original hardware, too? Like, that's pretty damn cool. Don't you think? I mean, that's pretty neat to be able to do that. And we'll show yeah. that. We'll, we'll do it a little bit later. Right? Where Justin's going to kind of do the Nintendo stuff, and then I'm going to do the Sega stuff. Unless you want to bounce is that back what we're and doing? forth. I don't know. We can bounce back and so forth. So we add this in? Okay. All right. So do you want to basically... throw my game up there too, just for a second? Okay. What do you, you, wait, get... what do you guys think my game is? <laughs> oh, what do you think my game is? Of course. Of course. All right. We can, we can take it off. We got, we we got too off. many things on the screen. How about this? There yeah, we go. Now, so this me. is great. This me. is great. See, you love Super Mario World, and I love Streets of Rage. I think we should just do... <laughs> Hold wait, on. Let me see if I can... It. Can you get it so that I'm under mine? No, oh, I don't think so. Come on. You can't? <laughs> Why is it forcing me to be Super Mario? <laughs> nah, it won't do All right, it. Whatever. Okay, so it's check fine. this out. We'll just do it at the same time, right? So anyway, so this is I don't I don't have to say, like it's it's it may be hard to see through through YouTube. You know, YouTube has compression, but this is the original an analog super NT running the original cart. You, oh, by the way, just just going back. No, I can't go back. Anyway, if you saw it, I had beat the game, almost beat the game twice. Uh, what is it? 96 is the highest you can go. So I haven't like completely beat it, but this is like the the fresh one. And I don't know how well this is going to come through. So are you going to show, Justin, why don't you show like, you know, because people are, people are, some people are being exposed to these consoles for the first time, right? So show them mm -hmm. some of, you know, the advanced okay. functions of the console too, because they both have unique functionality, which is pretty cool uh, yeah. to the console itself. You, you ready? Know? You ready for this? Oh, the cool little. This is inside sound. the FPGA. Yeah. 
See, it was all black. You, you know. That was your joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all you right. So what we're looking. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. So what we're looking at over here. This is this is the uh, the analog Super NT, and then the screen over to the right where it says Run Cartridge. I'm moving it around. That's that's the menu when you first come into it. And and so this you, was cool. If you go this back there, Justin, I'll get the menu up for the. If we, so we can have both of them up at the yeah, same yeah. time. If you go back to this prior screen, I'll sh we can get it back. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, so right now I'm booting up the Mega SG on the other side. So that thing's booting up. It has a similar tone, kind of has a little bit of a different little intro music there, but similar things. You have, you know, it's kind of same options as you do on Justin's end. You have, you know, play the mm -hmm. cartridge. Um, this one has a built-in game called Ultra Core, which was actually a Genesis game that was never released. So they actually... Uh, finished it and, and put it in there. And then, you know, some of those functions Justin's showing on the Super NT side, it's the same thing. We, we have those same options on the Mega SG as well. We'll, we'll show you that in a little bit, though. That's, That's right. pretty so important you can... what you're showing right there. So if someone wants to stretch their image, they can, even though mm -hmm. don't necessarily love that. <laughs> yeah, the options are there. And then you got, let's see, you got the different scalar types. You got um, scan lines, whether you want to put some scan lines in there. We'll just choose one real quick. And some of you guys have seen this because we've been we've been doing some live streams uh, of these products, and uh, they they work great for. I mean, it's HDMI out, so you know if you're doing any live streams, you plug that sucker straight into a capture card, and it's going to look great. And this is again running from original cart. It's not dumping it into memory. It's literally reading it, so it has all the same features as game saves, you name it. And now, uh, keep in mind, Justin, I want to make sure everyone's clear that's watching. Like we're streaming this through a service that isn't meant for game streaming so no. if it seems like clunky to you or the frame rates that has nothing to do with the console it's just the system we're streaming it from is not meant to do gameplay so it's probably going to be jumpy and stuff like that That's yeah not the it's console. probably going to be jumpy um, but anyway jeffrey and water had a super chat he said streets of rage on the ia arcade uh that'd be really cool if he did that <laughs> that would definitely be appealing for me that's for sure those of you that don't know ia arcade they have an mm -hmm. agreement now with sega so it's pretty cool we had a we have a we have a episode on it so if you want to go check it out later Definitely do that. Thanks for the super chat, though, Jeff. Appreciate it. Yeah, so why don't you... Uh, let me just get this sound off here. Why don't you show them uh, the Mega SG? Yeah, so on the Mega SG, same stuff here. You got you, you got your main menu where you can play your cartridge. If you look, I have I actually have Streets of Rage in here. So if you look right now on, that, on my table setup, I have the actual original Streets of Rage cart. Now, keep in mind, you can also use, if you have mm -hmm. an EverDrive, uh, it'll fully support a Mega EverDrive, too. So you yeah, can use so original about that, carts like, or multi-carts. Those other consoles that dump games can't play an EverDrive because an EverDrive isn't really a game you can dump. You know, does that make sense? It's like it's connected to an SD card, and then there's just, you know, a whole bunch of games inside there. But when you recreate the original console so well that you put, like, an EverDrive, which is an emulator for a cartridge, it's going to, like, that FPGA-based oh, console on, is Justin, just going to... Justin. Hold on. Do you guys hear that? I just, guys, I have to. I, I this brings me back to my childhood. This, like, do you just not love the theme song, the intro Can, to Streets of Rage the original? I could listen to this all day long. Now, could you listen to it all day on those Sega Akame clones that came out 20, mid 20? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, no. No, it was so <laughs> bad. They couldn't recreate the, so they couldn't recreate that Yamaha chip, right? the mm -hmm. yamaha audio chip and it was terrible i mean if anybody ever had those it, it they knew it was terrible though they were they've admittedly said like yeah it was totally bad what we were doing there but yeah no it was it was 100 terrible <laughs> it That's was right. almost like you couldn't even listen to it but yeah this reproduces the audio exactly how you remember it so if you love all those streets of rage soundtracks they're gonna come through exactly how you remember them they sound great as a matter of fact they actually sound a little bit better because I'll, I'll show you this really quick so mm-hmm while we're sitting here in the settings menu, there's an audio option here, which says high quality mode. And it actually like tweaks the audio quite a bit. And then you can go in here too and like, you can adjust different level. Oh, I, I had messed yeah, it up. So each Sorry, one guys. of these, each one of these is a different chip, right? For that, yeah. that was actually inside. Yeah, so it, it didn't sound right just there because I had one of the chips turned down. Because remember, before we started the stream, yeah. I had not saved it. So yeah, let's you say you have the it. settings the way you like it. You can back out and say save, save and clear settings.
save mm -hmm. settings now it's going to save it exactly where i like it so let's say you wanted it to default to scan lines or you want to default it to some filter that you enjoy you can do that all you know prior you know prior to you know setting it up and then you can just have it the way you want it everyone remembers this right how many people play this game still to this day and they accidentally hit a when they start the game and it's like damn it <laughs> <laughs> happens all the time but yeah every single time i see you stream this game you you always say that <laughs> but, if you, but if you look right here uh oops hold on one sec see we'll play with we'll play with one of the other settings really quick here so if you go to video mm -hmm. you've got scalers and scan lines so the scalers here there's some 2x and 3x scalers now you'll notice like the image is going to get like ultra ultra crisp uh some mm -hmm. people don't like the way it looks because it the scaler actually smooths the pixels out right i'll show you that in a second we'll do i don't know how hybrid scan lines are going to show with uh so that's with scan lines and scalers so yeah the if, one thing if everyone looks at the the white text at the top where it says one up you can usually see the scan lines there i can see them on my side yeah yeah, so I'll put normal scan lines now, so you can kind of see them there. I do feel like the capture cards and things like that kind of make these, don't, they don't look as good as they do when you have them hooked up to your regular TV. Yeah, um, Mike wants but, to know what X-Ray is. You want to try that setting? Yeah. Uh, let me go back. It's in the scalers. It's basically what you think it would be. <laughs> Which I don't know why you would, I, there's got to be some logical reason for this, but it's exactly what you'd think it would be. Uh, and I think... I could be wrong. Oh shoot! It just told me time over. I think if I if I understand this right, <laughs> what? I, I just it's funny that you just died. Um. So the, if I understand this right too, I think these <laughs> HQ two, three, and four. I think these are meant for something else. I can't remember what these are for. Um. I remember reading about them a while ago, and now I can't remember. But I personally like it with no scaler. I think they look. It looks great. Yeah. I mean, the it's game really looks funny because I feel the same way. Like, okay, if I'm gonna play original hardware on you know i'm gonna play it on a crt and the scan lines look amazing but then when you go over to like a product like the analog nt the scaler in it is so good it's so good that adding scan lines actually makes it worse because they do such a great job scaling that original picture up like we've talked about it before both if you're playing on an rgb monitor it's too good like the quality is just too good your eyes start to water because it's so good and like, yeah you, know, you cry <laughs> yeah but then yep. on some of the fpga you know hardware recreations that scale up to 1080p you plug that on a big screen tv it's larger than life you play a game like mario and i'm telling you like the blue background of of the original super mario brothers is so clear i don't even know if i've ever seen my television where every single pixel in the television is a perfect shade of blue like it's perfect shade of blue throughout the entire background. And then when you add scan lines to it, it actually makes it look look not as good. So I have this weird yeah. situation where I want scan lines on a CRT. I want scan lines if the hardware is really bad. <laughs> and I don't want scan lines if the hardware is really good. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's it's weird. I, I I actually find myself using this more without the scan lines and without the mm -hmm. scalers at all because it just looks so good. I wanted to show yeah, them really so quick just in the Sega CD mm -hmm. too, just to show them that functionality. Well, which while game are you gonna play? Uh, I, the, I for some reason I couldn't find so I I don't see Zohar in here tonight, but I looked inside my the Mortal Kombat case that I have for Sega CD, and inside it was was Terminator versus whatever that Sega CD game was. Someone else in the chat will remember. There's like a Terminator Sega CD game. I can't mm -hmm. remember what it is. Or maybe it's just Terminator. I can't remember. So I can't find my I can't find my uh Mortal Kombat, unfortunately. Uh let's see. So, so basically Bob, when you he, he asked a really so good go question. Um I, I can ex let me explain this question while you're looking for that real quick. Um so why why don't you just use original hardware? So ooh, hold on. We'll get back to that question because that's looking really good. Yeah, it get looks up. awesome. Let me um let me get the audio pumped up a little bit here. Mm-hmm. It's so iconic to hear the uh, yeah. Sega CD music. Let me just make sure that these... Okay, that's all good. All right, cool. So, yeah, I was telling you guys this before. There's a high-quality uh, Yamaha mode. Now, Justin, I think this is what this means. I think this is actually the mimicking the chip in the original Model 1 Genesis, if I remember right. I, I could be wrong about that, but I think the 2612 is actually the original chip. If I'm wrong, someone correct me, but I think that's what that is. So you can enable it or disable it 
and I think if you disable it, you get you get sound quality that isn't as good, and that's what you got with like the Model Two Genesis, and then the, the it's even worse quality. I think if you go with the Model Three Genesis, which was oh, oh man, oh I don't oh you know what I don't have the disc in, that's why it still <laughs> looks really go, good if, on the stream. If you go though. back to the cam though, if you go back to the cam, I'll, you can see me putting the disc in. If you go back to the desk cam, I'll yeah. put it in. And the disc wasn't in, so I have the only thing I could dig up was Final Fight, so we'll put Final Fight in there. And I should be able to play that if we kick this off. Let's see. We should be able to... Oh, nope. We don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. I think I just hit CD-ROM and it should play. There we no. go. No. Looks good, right? Like, <laughs> Sega CD looks amazing on here. I mean, it looks amazing, amazing. <laughs> so right. good. Uh, and for those of you who've never played this version of Final Fight, it has, like, a total CD soundtrack that's really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably one of the best versions of Final Fight, I think, from the console era. I think it's really, really good from of that, you know, that time frame. Right. Um, you'll Final see when Fight I start CD. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys saw the Angry Video Game Nerd just did a video on Final Fight. It was like the crappy Final Fight games that came after Final Fight. Uh, yeah. I didn't finish watching it, so I don't know exactly what the conclusion was. But I think there was like a couple of fight, Final Fight fighting games and they were freaking terrible. Yeah, it still Sorry. does that. That was my voice. <laughs> that was my impression. Here, I'm gonna, pretty good, I'm gonna, right? Not bad. It was pretty good. I'm going to actually put the music up so you guys can hear it a little bit better. But the music on this, if you've never if you've never experienced it, is pretty good. I think if I put it up to 30, that should be okay. Go for it. Shouldn't it. Be too, it shouldn't be too loud. So I don't know if you get, can you hear it okay? Yeah, it's all right. Here, I'll put it up a little Everybody higher. be real quiet. Ralph is trying to show us the music. Shh. It's cool, right? Listen to it, though. It's so cool. It's you know, so... Honestly, this game came out in the 90s, right? Why does the music sound 80s? It, well, it's the original music. It's just they kind of, like, gave it, like, more of a CD soundtrack. You know, it's a little bit... You know, the, the, the guitar playing and stuff. I mean, it's definitely a lot better, but... <laughs> Are you actually playing it? Are you playing the real yeah. guitar behind it? <laughs> yeah, so Justin, oh, someone was yeah. saying... I'll, I'll t <laughs> but now, I can't, now you can't hear me. Um, so, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Remy was saying this. This is actually very true. So you pair a Mega SG with a Mega SD, and then you can actually... I know it sounds confusing, but then you can actually <laughs> play... Um, you can actually Sega play Sega CD. CDs without a Sega CD. Right, because so, um, the Mega SD can emulate the, the CD, Sega CD in an FPGA <laughs> that's yeah, in, in the FPGA. cartridge. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like you're totally in the Matrix for that. But yeah, yeah it's totally. totally cool. So what else do you want to show off, yep. Justin? I know, I know, you. I don't want to make you yeah, jealous so, with all the Sega So Bob stuff. was talking about. <laughs> so Bob was talking about. A bit here. All right, cool. So Bob was talking about why not just use original hardware. And I'll give you an example. So this is an original Nintendo. This is the second version. Uh, this one's really cool because you can put a cart in the top. So if you ever need to clean the game, it's really easy to reach. And you don't have any of those issues of the Nintendo front loader. The front Nintendo front loader putting games, sliding it in is actually a bad design. You'll notice no one else did it. And Nintendo never did it again after the original Nintendo. And in 93, I believe this came out, they went with a top loader version. On the back, it only has RF. Uh, but what I've added, it, this has a little 3D print guy in it that allows you to put an HDMI in it. Now, this guy, this is what's cool is this this HDMI port and the scaler in it was made by the same guy who built the Super NT. Uh, he worked directly with uh, Game Tech, Jason from Game Tech, game-tech.us. And he has some of these for sale. They go for about four to five, sometimes $600. This whoa, whoa. guy, yeah, this guy over here, 100, you know, this is 200 bucks. And, and it, it's so if you want to go down the route of playing original hardware, you can. Now, it's not always that expensive. You could Justin, get like think it's fair to say, though, like, don't you think it's fair to say? So I obviously have a lot of I, I went and invested a lot in consoles I used to own. But don't you think it's fair mm -hmm. to say also that someone like you who's really good at soldering, like you can go and do cap, you know, capacitor replacements and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like that can you you sometimes have to do that with some of these older consoles. So you know, you buy something like a Mega SG or a Super NT, like it's brand new hardware, you know? So there, right. it's not like, I, in my life in gaming, I can't remember who they who they interviewed. I want to say it was uh, Voltar who says, yeah. 
He says, look, some of these consoles, you'll never have to do that to, but some right. of them were notorious for having problems. I can't remember which ones he identified exactly, but some just had crappy capacitors and they have to be replaced. Like they leak right. and stuff like that. One of so, them is the Game Gear. The Game Gear, it's basically you buy a Game Gear, you got to replace the capacitors. So if you want to get back into yeah. playing the original Game Gear, it's not going to be a fun... Now, it's not always like that. So, like, you know, right the Turbo now... Turbo Express was like that, too. I wonder if mm. those handhelds... I wonder if the handhelds... I think that's just, one of the examples where the capacitors that were actually in the original unit were the wrong ones. Like, they mass-produced, and logically, like, the circuits... So they you shouldn't don't think have put it was like there. a let's cut... You don't think it was like a let's cut corners Maybe. and make the most Maybe. money we can't? Yeah. I'm, I mean, those I'm not aren't too... expensive parts, though. They were talking, like... Yeah. I mean... A capacitor now is super cheap. Were they super expensive then, maybe? Like, were capacitors more expensive then? It just I don't seems know. weird maybe. that they would have put crap capacitors in. Because in that video, that My Life in Gaming video, which mm -hmm. you guys should go watch. Analog like, Frontiers? Fantastic yeah. series. The part two on it, he starts showing boards, and he's like, yeah, see these five capacitors? These are awesome. But then they put crappy ones on this same board. It's like, if they just put those, we would have been fine. Like, it's just funny. I don't, I right. don't know. And Jeff so, makes a point. So the Game Gear, yeah, 12 minutes of fun and then the batteries run dead. <laughs> yeah. the, the analog pocket that's coming out, like, charges on that dock, right? And has built-in battery supply. And it's 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 supposedly it's not going to be 12 minutes, you know? So there's another reason why um, that, that product would be really good. Now, so, like, right now, if you want to get into using original hardware, one of the devices that's decently priced is the Super Nintendo. So you look for the Super Nintendo, the second version. Don't get the first version. Uh, the second version, which is... I don't think I have one near... Do I? Maybe? Maybe? Try to, I do have one. I'll go grab it in a moment. So All right. the second version of the Super Nintendo, um, you can put uh, an RGB uh, bypass <laughs> chip in it. One of the best ones is by Voltar. And I think that would run you about 150 bucks right now. And so that'll make it where your component... It'll, 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 if you get like the HD retrovision... Super Nintendo cables, which I think are coming back in stock soon. You about two hundred dollars. You got an original hardware that plays original carts, and you got component out. You can plug that into, um, you know, an original CRT. Or if the Super NT was in stock, you can buy that for about the same price, and you have HDMI out. So that one's like, okay, it's up to you. Do you want to go down the original hardware? You yeah. want to get the Super NT? It's going to cost you about the same. So the thing with the thing, Justin, that was interesting is I have a Model 1 and a Model 2 Genesis. And so you would think, and I have all the right equipment to hook it up the best way possible, right? I've got the HD Retrovision cables. I've got an OSSC, like, and I can even go, and we'll have episodes on this, I'm sure, in the future. Best we can stringer even... films. <laughs> what? I love no how I, I defer the Super Chats until Justin's done talking, but he interrupts me in the middle of I interrupt you. I, I, yeah, I don't right. think that's Okay, we'll nice. get back to it in just a second. Go ahead. You're right. <laughs> no, I forgot that what was I was saying, That was a super actually. valid point. I pulled I a Ralph. Um, go ahead. <laughs> I actually forgot what I was saying now. Okay, but check so it out. I'll talk so and then the you'll remember. One. No, oh, I bought go. the Model 1 Genesis and I bought the Model 2 Genesis. And mm -hmm. I had all the things to hook them up the best way possible. And then Justin got me into the whole RGB uh, with, a, mm -hmm. with a PVM, which we'll have to do a whole episode on that because you got me into that in all fairness. I didn't really know about that world, but I still bought a Mega SG. And I think part of me, the reason why I bought mm -hmm. it was I knew that the Mega SG is going to last me probably forever. So it's right. one of those things where it was like more of a preservation thing. You know, I mean, I hope those other consoles last a long time, but they may not. So... I'll yeah. always have that fallback. Plus, the Mega SG is native HDMI. I can throw it on the TV downstairs. Yeah. So that's kind of nice to be able to do that. Why not both? So, well, so, so I know, but money sometimes, finances yeah. get in the way too sometimes. So Stringer right? Films, no wonder this NES part quit working. It says made in Japan. What are you talking about, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. <laughs> yeah, anyway. so that's the thing. Like, the Doc is going to cost... Um, a little bit more. And the question, which one uh, I'm going to get? So I've been thinking the black. So, like, think about it. Like, I don't know, what 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 color iPad do you have? Do you have the white iPad or the black iPad? And which color do you have for, like, a phone? I always thought, um, let's say I'm going to play, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch some movies, right, on my iPad. I didn't want a white border. You know, I was thinking if I'm kind of in a darker room and I'm, like, watching a movie on a handheld, you know? the white border would probably distract me. So I probably want a black one. So then, you know, I, I don't see anything. Only thing I see is the screen. So I'm taking that same approach with the the pocket. I was thinking about getting the, because if those of you don't know, there's two versions of the analog pocket. You can get a white, 
one that's colored white and one that's black. And so black I one's better. I feel like this would be the the kind of thing that uh Justin's a really good friend, but I feel like this would be the thing where he'd be like, "Did you pre-order it this morning?" and I'd be like, "Yeah, I pre-ordered it." <laughs> and then and then and then he'd like later on call me and be like, "Hey man, you know, I was kind of thinking, did you order the white one or the black one?" I'd be like, "What do you mean?" He'd be like, "Well, I was just thinking like if you had planned on playing it in bed, you're probably going to play it in bed, right?" I'd be like, "Oh yeah, t- totally, Justin." I'd be like, "Oh, well, you don't want the white border." And I'd be like, "Damn it." And then I go <laughs> I back the and, it's, and they're out of stock. No, no, true story, you know. You said it to me beforehand now, so this a is couple, good. So now a, I know. A couple months ago, I was like, "Hey dude, the analog NT is back. <laughs> I the V2 though. is out. Go get it right now. You won't regret it. I know. I pre-ordered I it. I know. He didn't. And then it was out of stock. And I was like, you didn't get it? And he's like, no, I didn't get no, it. No, no, that's not what happened. Do you remember I was on? No, we. I was on my phone and I was like looking at Twitter. And I think I was on the, I was on, or I was on my computer. And it said like limited stock available. Like you should get yours right away. And I was like, but you had already told me that like 24 hours prior. So I was like, yeah. hey, do you think they're already sold out? And your response was like, dude, you meet, you didn't get it. And I'm all, oh, <laughs> and I went there and it was all sold out. So sold out. you did try to, you did in your defense, you did try to make sure I got one. So that was it's a tough bad. one. That's because I, because at that time I was like, I kind of know that possibly the next, and then they announced later, which is another really weird thing that the the version two of the analog NT is going to have more features than the original one. And so then all the people that have the NT mini, the V1, they're like, what gives you going to do a firmware update for that one or what, what's going on? You know, so we'll, we'll wait to see. So Jeff Rainwater said, does it bother you playing the white Evercade? So I did. I don't know if I did. I ever say I bought the white one. I don't remember that. Did you maybe ever show I it? Said, I think maybe I said that. No, I don't. I, I don't even think I ever showed it. It's not in. It's not in here. It's actually in my. How does my he know? I don't know. It's on my nightstand. Are you looking at? <laughs> we do live in the Matrix. Proof is right there from Jeff. But I, I actually don't. I'm not really loving my Evercade, to be honest. I'm trying to force myself to like it. I don't know what it is. I, I don't. I think it's just. I don't. Something about it. I'm not in love with. I just. I can't wait to get the the pocket to see if like it's it's the. It, I don't know. It's like a different experience. I don't know. It's not a bad device. I'm not like but dogging it or anything. I think it's like the certain carts I got have games on it. I'm not really thrilled about. So I don't know, I'm giving it more. I'm giving it more of a chance before I review it or anything. <laughs> Anyways, what, what is he says, good news, Justin got two and you can have one for 2K. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be messed up. Um, yeah, Ralph. So um, you want to oh, buy my analog this- anti? Lori's got Lori ha, has said thinking about resurrecting my old Commodore 60, 64. Hope the floppy still works. So, so actually, this is kind of cool because it's also F, FPGA based. We won't we don't necessarily have to get into it in deep detail right now, but this is where I I bought that little mini N sixty four. Remember they they came out with the N sixty four mini. I have a real N sixty four mini. Oh, sorry, um, C sixty four. They had C64. a Commodore sixty four mini. They came out with like a year ago, maybe two years ago. Now I can't remember. I bought it, but I have a real Commodore 64 uh, in my storage unit. But actually, what, what, wait, wait, what wait. has... Do you have the monitor for it, too? I don't have the monitor, though, and they had a sweet monitor. I don't have the monitor Those for monitors it. are so good. Even they with were component, awesome everything looks good. They were killer monitors. They were great. Um, I don't have that anymore. But but the what's cool is the Mr. Project does, does do FPGA recreation of Commodore 64 really well. So... Um, so that might be an avenue you take if you're doing Commodore stuff. Although, uh, did you see this video, Justin, that someone put a Mister inside, uh, like an old PC case? Or did you send oh, right. me that? Did you send? No, me I that? didn't send it to you. But the whole it's idea is awesome. Mister doesn't re- doesn't only recreate retro consoles; it can recreate retro computers. And it's and it's cool because the guy in his video was like, "Oh, he look, goes, Lori still has the monitor." Oh, what? Dude, I wish I had the you. monitor. I remember the Grab monitor, the monitor and killer. plug any any retro console into it with component. It will yeah. look it'll look good. I'm sorry, composite. The monitor was killer. Yeah, the monitor was wicked good. I remember that. But uh, cuz I remember after my Commodore was kind of like I don't know, I wasn't using it as much. I was using it for I want to say I hooked my NES to it. I don't know, it looked amazing. I just remember yeah. it looking really good. But um but the guy That was one the of video, the monitors like I was 11 years old and that's when I discovered RF sucks. And there's a, there, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's probably one of the things that got me. I mean, literally when I was 18 years old, I became a cable guy so I can go into people's homes and make their TVs look better. <laughs> like every install was all like, OK, so you have this video and our DVR does this video or whatever it was, you know. And anyway, sorry, continue do you your story. Remember, do you remember like 
like like little basic stuff like you'd have rf hooked up and you know the the, the two terminal connectors like that one what is would it get loose it was but in the deleted like, scene from uh, back to the future do you have what? a matching transformer that's what they're called matching transformers but do you the remember 75 that? ohm yeah, yeah 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 but do you remember like sometimes i don't know why this would happen but sometimes like the screws would get a little loose so you'd see it'd be mm -hmm. get a little fuzzy and you'd like mm -hmm. just get a little tweak and tighten them up and you're all of a sudden good or or the uhf vhf slider would somehow have gotten bumped so it was like in the middle so it didn't look right. good so you just had to like it was it, so stupid this remember stuff the knob around that. it and you could turn the knob so you could kind of get it to <laughs> yeah. tune to channel three a little bit better <laughs> my uh my parents my parents had the uh the antenna on the roof with the dial so you could actually turn it mm -hmm. do you, you probably do you remember those like yeah. where you'd turn it i remember thinking as a kid i didn't really understand i knew that if you turn the antenna in different directions you could get different channels to come in better but as a kid i just remember tur tur turning the dial and going outside just to see it move like it mm -hmm. had nothing to do with the tv i just go outside to watch it move <laughs> so so stupid but anyways i can't I believe oh. zero hero would say this that i would hook people up with free cable that is you actually you actually have never said that you did that. But you did tell me the story. You did tell me that you used to. So Justin did tell me when he was doing working for the cable company, if people had CRTs, he would say they could feel oh, free yeah. to donate it, which basically mean mean then <laughs> give it to Justin. Yeah, <laughs> but, they knew. But I guess that was cool. No, I so, no, you told them you were honest. You told me you were honest. Yeah, I was, was I was I was an installer and I'd you know, I'd go into a person's house, right? And you know, they would they would have like four TVs that they want to connect to cable. And so I'd go in their house. I'm like, could I, you know, show me? Could you go ahead and show me where the rooms are? And often they would say this, the living room. Mm -hmm. And then you go upstairs. They didn't want to walk me around like they're like, oh, just go upstairs. You'll see it's all the bedrooms. Hook up all the bedrooms. I'm like, OK. So, you know, I go upstairs on my own and I go into all the rooms and I see four TVs. But then there's like a fifth room or something. And there was a TV in there. And I said, hey, do you want me to hook up the other room, too? Let me know, because then I know which splitter to get, right? And they're like, no, we don't ever use that TV. We're going to get rid of it. I'd be like, oh, I'll recycle it for you if you want. And some people would say, what do you mean? I'd be like, yeah, I'll tell my buddies, do you guys want a TV? Like, if the TV works, I'll take the TV, put it in my van, and I'll make sure it finds a home. And they're like, oh, <laughs> great. That saves us a trip. <laughs> and then some of them, you know, I'd upgrade my own CRT, because I was... By that time, I was all like, I'm not switching to these flat LCD screens because, you know. Dude, what? I still get pay-per-view for free. Actually, Wait, what? I don't get pay-per-view for free. We're, gonna get, we're, gonna, we're not going to get copyright strike. We're going to get sued by someone. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, free TV, <laughs> free TV, free HBO. I uh, No, but I never got to the end of the story. So the guy in the video... The guy in the video, what he was saying was, he goes, this mister is enable me, enabling me to build something that's FPGA based that I wish I had as a kid. Because he goes, as a kid, as computers started to come out, he goes, I wish there was one. He did say in the video, he wasn't sure if he actually wished this or he wished it as an adult. He's like, I don't remember. But he goes, I wanted one computer that had all the computers in it, like that I could have every computer from my childhood in one single place. And so like there, he the whole project he did was... He put the mister inside a real computer case. He has a CRT monitor hooked up to it. It's it was a really cool little project that he did. I was pretty stoked on it. So FPGA maybe I'll Virtual do that Boy. one day. That's not a joke, man. The FPGA Virtual Boy that that guy is coming. I'm watching closely. So there's this but guy it, but that does made. Does it have enough of a fan base though? Like, am I tripping? I don't no. feel they like only it made has like 19 games, base. right? I think it so. Was. There's yeah, like a like there's games. there's an emulator cart that's coming out. There, there's been a few in the past, but there's one that's coming out that allow you to like. Dude, they got some really cool emulators. You know, like we're talking about um, multi-cart like emulators, right? Like an EverDrive. There's a new one coming out that actually has like a a screen, like the same screen that's on like a what's it called? The uh, the 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 uh, what's it called? The Amazon Book thing that you would get, like the Kindle. Oh, oh, the e you know, like e the e ink, e ink, the stuff. e ink, right? They, yeah. they have like a multi-cart that's coming out that has an e ink on it, and it'll be the picture of the cartridge that you're playing. Oh, Come cool. on. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Like, yeah, anyway, I, I anyway. That. That's neat. Um, but, but, but I will tell you real quick. Really I, quick. I, I quick. I want to poll really quick. Can okay. we just do a quick poll? Put a one in put a one in the chat if you had a virtual boy. There can't be that many people that had it. Like, I bet there might be like five people in this whole entire thing out of 136. I'd actually be surprised if there were five people. So I bought a virtual boy from Walmart 
had it for a couple weeks. My mom said something about, I heard they give you headaches. You should return it. And then I was like, yeah, I think it did give me a headache. But really, I think it was just my neck was hurting. And then I returned oh, there it. Are there are people that actually have it. Mr. Chip has it. Someone said they have two of them. So Remy has three. What? I'm surprised. Like, I don't know. It was It's just something well, I When I got no one, it wasn't, I it wasn't expensive. I did buy two of them. The coolest one I have, which we've showed on here before, is the one that's the Blockbuster um, one. You... Mr. Chip said you bought one at Walmart. Okay, okay, <laughs> hold on. Going, That's going not the back. only, by the way, there's been multiple jokes in here about you buying something listen, at Walmart. Listen, listen, earlier someone was saying like, you know, the, the you know, free pay-per-view. Here's the deal. So I used to work for Time Warner, had free TV then. Then, uh, let's see, I worked for AT&T, had free cable then. I worked for Dish Network, had free cable. DirecTV, free cable. Worked for Stars had free stars now i work for disney working on disney plus i have free disney plus so i mean every company that i've ever worked for i've got free something you know and apparently so, there's like apparently i didn't all steal of any of those all of the virtual boys that exist in the universe are apparently people on our <laughs> on our live stream right now there's like a ton of them you really have four of them this is this what is that heck? thing where like dude you pulled a group of people that are watching a podcast where they're talking <laughs> about console games yeah, I know, I and you know, wonder do you own a console game this is like the other day we we're like hey we should pull people that are watching ralph's live stream if they like watching ralph's live stream and if he should do more video game I live know, streams so, so the well other of day, course they're gonna say yeah. yes because they're continuing <laughs> to watch you the other day i'm like justin i know what i'm gonna do during the live stream i'm gonna ask i really need to figure out if people are enjoying the live stream so i'm gonna ask them if they enjoy the live stream and he's like yeah but they're on your live stream so wouldn't they not be on your live stream if they didn't enjoy right. your live stream? I'm like, damn it! So anyway. Yeah, let's do a quick Sometimes poll. Sometimes I'm not that smart. I only want the poll from Sometimes. the people that watch this whole episode. <laughs> do you like 1UP Weekly? Yes or no? <laughs> Give me a zero if you don't like 1UP Weekly. Give us a one if you do. That's just a dumb poll, man. But now they're going to joke with you. Now they're going to mess with us now. Now they're going to make us feel... We're going to be super depressed after because it's going to be like... They're going to do like negative ones or something like that. Negative ones, yeah. I don't even... See, I already forgot. Actually... If you look at it, they're they're actually giving us ones because they're they're pretty nice, right? They're like one. <laughs> you like your show? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so Rudy's like That's, reset. Rudy's I get like, that, yeah, man. I don't really like it, but I can't stop watching it. <laughs> He's never heard of it before. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. We appreciate the love. Hey, so we're coming up on time. What, what's going? What else? That's what else? right. I think we gotta go. We have, do we have anything else we have to show for tonight? Or? I think I think we have to do on the spot. Retro Ralph, completely unprepared. Final thoughts. All right. Do we have my music? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's final thoughts time. <laughs> what did we learn in today's episode? Well, we learned that Justin would help people that uh, he would go install cable TV for to recycle or donate their CRTs. We also learned that Justin has acquired various technologies by going to Walmart and acquiring them. Of course, by paying like any other good citizen would do. We also learned that Justin was a cable guy. And I don't really know what else to say about him being a cable guy because <laughs> at first, I, as we built our friendship, I thought he's pretty normal. But I'm quite questioning whether he is or not now because he was a cable guy. Um, <laughs> I also learned that FPGA-based consoles look really, really awesome, and they're a great alternative to using original hardware. And they're probably going to give you less headaches in the long run. <laughs> but, you know, everything's got everything's give and take. So that's it, man. That's all I really learned today. I, and I learned that uh, Justin interrupts Ralph a lot more than he interrupts him now, because <laughs> yeah. he's learned... And also Justin I learned that Ralph <laughs> likes to talk to himself, like, in the third person a lot. What? You just said you referred to yourself as Ralph. You well, are I Ralph. I know, but I'm telling a story. Okay. I guess. And Justin interrupts his co-host, <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> Whatever. That's it. <laughs> Play us out, Justin. Play us out. I don't want to go. But we have to go. We have to go. Why is the camera only on me? Did you I don't do that know, because it's final thoughts. We do that on purpose all the time. Oh, okay.
Okay. I was going to start playing. I was going to play us out to some Streets of Rage. Can I play Streets of Rage while you play us out? I guess. Do 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 Streets of Rage. Ready? Just while we're... Yeah, hold on. It. I just love this song so much that I just have to play it. How about... Go. All right, let's see. Uh, let's get our... Let's get us get it on here. This cart is pretty dirty, so oh, it actually looks like it's gonna play. Let's see. Let's see. This is now the encore part of the episode. Hey, Ryan figured it out. That was Megadeth. Yeah, I don't know the whole song, but I remember when I was a kid, I learned how to do that. Something like that. Cracking and then he talks really weird. I don't know how to play it. And then I, I just want to listen to the intro, and then and then we and then that's it. I just love it so much. I know it's so good. Do it. Wait. Oh no, no. Did you not turn up the volume? There it is. I hope that's not too loud. Perfect pitch. No, I don't have it. No, you sound like you sound like the At Games emulation right now on the the old Sega console. Let it play out a little bit. Let it play out a little bit. Okay. Do you guys not love it? Like, seriously, Yuzo Koshiro is just the man. Like, I don't think he could ever recreate this. Like, I don't think you could make this better. Like, he he did the lightning in a bottle thing. He did Back to the Future. He made his Back to the Future was his music, his soundtrack for this game. He killed it. He nailed it out of the park and then Justin ruined it by playing over it. But it's fine. Oh, wait, actually, people are... <laughs> all right, all right. All right, I'll, I'll, ready? Can you recreate it? It's just you now. Can you recreate it, Justin? He just, this is what he's I don't know. I, could, I didn't really get the melody. Do you want to listen to it one more time? Sure, sure, go for it again. Okay, hold on. Okay, try. I'm giving you this chance. Do you want to try it now? Do you want Do you want to try it now from the top? <laughs> I don't know. I was I following you... along. It's something like... Close. I don't know. I'm like totally like 80ing this. Yeah, you're sound. making it like a wicked, wicked 80s. I'm good at that. I don't know. I have to hear more. Do you want anyway. to do it one more time? Or are we... Or are we sure. Are we take... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, re- I'm resetting it. I'm resetting it. Hold on. Okay. This is stupid. It's just... I wish, my family, I wish. It goes way too long. Like I'm like I'm like no, it should like repeat more often. <laughs> I can't do all it. Right, all right, all right, all right. You tried. It was a it was a valid attempt. I bet you're gonna come back next week and you'll have it, right? No, I won't. I'll be yeah, like, you this will. Is dumb. Uh, Mike basically says if you rob me of closing time, you're ruining his whole weekend. So basically, you better all you better right, give right. you better give Mike what he wants. A oh, hobby hands. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. He says have to have to go. Dinner time. Love the show. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate everyone's support. And Justin's gonna give Mike what he wants. And hopefully, everyone else wants it too, because it's it's become a staple on the show. This Justin space does closing tag. travel program this is tag, got though. me so blue. Planet tag. to planet, there's not much to do. I got a lot of friends, but there that's not so bad. 
Then I fell in love with a girl I just can't have Cause Cindy's from Saturn and she don't breathe our air If I could breathe those gases, you know that I'd move there We'd play on the rings and she'd wear mine And we'd have little aliens and that would be just fine How, how does the beginning of, um, what's the Mike. song I'm supposed to play again? Closing time? <laughs> Closing time. Yo. One last call for alcohol, so finish your whiskey or beer. Closing time. You don't have to buy analog products, but you gotta play something. Why not original car consoles? I don't know. So, so gather, gather up, up your jackets. Move into the exits. I hope, we hope you have we had have a fun lot of tonight. Lag. Okay, now take it. Close in time. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Yeah. Close in time. Gonna repeat that last line so it sounds like we're ending the song. That's kind of ironic because I didn't repeat those last lines, but we are ending the song. All and right. we'll see you on the next one. The next one. Take care, guys. Thanks for all the support. We'll see you next Sunday. Stringer Phil. Oh, Stringer had to throw in the super chat at the end. Let's set a date for Rygar night. Okay, he said it. We'll see you on the next one. Shake down 1979. He's, I. Wait. Cool kids never. We're still had live, you know. Time. We're still live. We're still live. You're supposed to end it. No, wait, we are still live or we're not? Live while right you clicked it, right? The street, you and I. No, seriously, you clicked it, right? All right, well, I don't know if you clicked it, so I guess I'm just going to sit here and wait until like you listen to me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> With the headlights were pointing at the you, uh, Don't worry, I'll click, click this thingy? out so we don't get the... Did you click the thingy? We will show we never see an end to it all. And I... Like I don't care to shake these zip like up blues. Oh, and we don't know. Look like it. Just where our bones will rest. It's like it. Oh, the dust, <laughs> I guess. Ralph, please end this stream. Because I gotta edit this part out. Because last Dead. week we got a copyright claim Dead. for playing Dead. Disarm. Dead. Did you go that? <laughs> You're supposed to click it. Click I didn't the thing. know. Okay, click fine. I'll click it. I'll click it. On All the right. next one, guys. See you, guys. See you later. Bye. It's real this time. <laughs>